What's up folks? Uh, I initially planned on doing a two-parter video, a video with two parts. The first part was going to be me talking about One Piece, the anime, uh, and then the rest was just going to be dedicated to Hunter x Hunter. But then I realized that there wasn't a lot of stuff that I really needed to talk about One Piece other than this, the, the Dushrosa arc in the anime has been very, very enjoyable, and that's an understatement. It's been really, really well done. Especially that fight between Luffy and Don Ching Zhao, which started last week. Uh, I loved the way that they incorporated, like, I don't know the name of the track, but it's a very epic type of music that just plays, and it gives you the impression that you're totally looking at the future King of the Pirates when you're looking at Luffy. Um, and then, so it, it's, it's a battle of hockey, at least it starts off that way, and they use like a very, very cool effect to just give it like a thunderous sound, and then you see these waves just expanding out of the Colosseum and hitting people, and obviously because it's a, it's a battle of Conqueror's hockey, you have people fainting left and right, like even the bulls in the water, the fish bulls, like <laughs> just all of a sudden start floating upward because they're they're knocked out. And what's good about scenes like these, and I'm also including the the scene in which Fujitora brings down a freaking meteor, is that I mean within the context of the arc, those are not even the final fights of the arc. Um, there was a there was a time last month in which I, I started you know questioning myself about the life of of my channel because. Um, it was an Naruto review. I'd done the Naruto review, and you know, I was, I was, you know, I said like, "Thank you so much for watching, commenting, all that junk." Right? It's not junk, but you know, it gets a little bit repetitive every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna say it at the end of this video, so buckle up. Anyway, and there was a comment that said, "Oh yeah, like you're doing pretty good, but as soon as Naruto ends, then what? Like nobody's gonna watch your shit." And I didn't, I didn't take it as an, as an offense. I actually. You know, I'm a very realistic person, so even when people are offensive, I feel like in order for to, for you to be truly offensive, there has to be some some sense of truth to what you're saying. So I thought about it, and I'm like, well, this this guy, this guy's right. I mean, because really, like most of the stuff that that gets most of the views in my channel are, are Naruto related in in some way, shape, or form. And so I thought about what what's going to happen, and I think it's a very complex thing because. As much as I love One Piece, the fact of the matter is, it hasn't, you know, it hasn't expanded to the level that Naruto expanded, or, or you know, it hasn't garnered the amount of attention it deserves, in my opinion. Maybe that's that's a better way of phrasing it for One Piece. That being said, there are some parts of One Piece that are excessively popular, chapters, individual chapters that are excessively popular. Just by taking a look at my channel, you can see. One Piece, 731, like all these viewers just came out of nowhere, like they came out of fucking rocks and shit, out of caves, just to, just to read that one chapter. Some of which, I'm pretty sure didn't even know what the fuck was going on. They read that chapter. The one after that, now the only reason why I'm referencing One Piece so much is because in the foreseeable future, that is the lone survivor of this construct that we've gotten to know as the big three. When I say survivor, I just mean that Oda is still going to be putting out weekly chapters long after Bleach and Naruto have reached their conclusions. And yet I still run into this sense of resistance and the fact that a lot of people, they just, just, they don't want to like anything other than Naruto. You know, they enjoy Naruto for what it is and they don't, they're not actively looking for other anime or manga to read, which is, you know, that's that's on them, you know. You can't really control, I think that's a, that's a recipe for disaster, wanting to control what people like and how they come to like it, that's, the, you can't, it's, it's impossible, you can't do that. Which is why I've stopped hating on fairy tale because you come to realize that it doesn't matter what you say to people. The fact of the matter is, like, if, if you want to like something that you don't like, they're gonna like it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> That was a lot of likes in one sentence. That being said, I did make a video once in which I asked people, how did you get into Naruto? And I remember this one comment that had a lot of thumbs up. And I read it and I was like, that's very interesting. And the comment said, the only reason I got into Naruto is because I turned on the TV and I, and I watched a scene that reminded me of DBZ. Now that to me means two things. Number one, People love the absolute shit out of DBZ. And number two, people, I think, are more willing to get into something new if they find certain traits or similarities 
between that new thing and something that they were previously enjoying or enjoyed. This brings me to Hunter x Hunter. This week's episode was a hype train that collided on the same course with another fucking hype train. Blew up all over the place. Now, initially, I was going to say that I still think that Netero versus Miriam is still the better fight, even though Gon versus Neferpidu isn't really a fight. It's a, it's a straight up fucking massacre. Um, I mean, if it weren't for the fact that Gon lost an arm, that would have been just an absolute slaughter. But now that I, I, I look at you know both fights differently, I think that in terms of, of, of philosophical value, ideological clash, and and just overall smartness in a fight, yeah, King, the King and King versus Netero is the better fight of the two. But in terms of evoking emotion and just, just hitting you right where you don't expect it, when you don't expect it, I, I give that to, to the, the fight between Gon and Pidu. And I know that's a very subjective judgment because it's, it's, it's based on emotion, which is why I can't really explain it other than saying, hey, it's based on, on emotion and on emotional reaction that you have from watching the episode. Um, but that being said, I think both fights do something, something very, very special in a very different way. And both of them work at the same level. They, they, the value that they have in different stages of, of, you know, just storytelling and anime, they, they're both on the same level in my eyes. I think it's, it, they're very different, but at the same time, they, they accomplish so much by their own that just sort of comparing the two is kind of a disservice to each of the fights. Now, I know some people were complaining about the fact that they thought that Gon's power-up was an ass pull, and I'm thinking to myself, how is it an ass pull if York New Arc, the York New Arc, with Kurapika foreshadowed the fact that if you place a restriction or a condition upon yourself that is, that is pretty, pretty major, you can increase your power and therefore have a power up in your abilities. That's the only reason why Kurapika was able to defeat Uvo. We also know that Kurapika is a manipulator. Like his Nen ability is, is that of a manipulator. Unless he activates his red eyes, then he's a specialist. So in that sense, understanding those, those things through Kurapika's character and applying them to Gon makes perfect sense because Gon is an enhancer. Obviously, we don't understand what Gon have, had to give up in order to enhance his physical state to the point that he did in the episode, but that's because if that were if that were shown before this fight, that would have ruined the shock value of his transformation and him beating the absolute shit out of Neferpidu. Finally, I know a lot of you want me to review the manga, and by the way, that chapter could not have landed at a better time. You know, it's coming off of this this enormous amount of hype that the the anime was able to just, you know, create. And you got the manga chapter, and the first thing I noticed, I skimmed through it because I'm not up to date, and that's another question I have. How many chapters would I need to read in order for me to catch up, beginning from the anime, this week's anime episode, to, the, to this recent chapter? How many chapters are in between uh, those, those two things? Please let me know. Uh, but the first thing I noticed when I was skimming through it was the fact that the art style had significantly improved. Until I got to the point where the with the zodiac, the Chinese zodiac signs, then I thought, okay, so this is kind of like Togashi style again. I could kind of see it. What, I, what I'm thinking of doing is experiencing the Chimera Ant arc as an anime only watcher, and then after it concludes and the new arc starts to you know pick up pick up some speed, that's when I'll jump into the manga. But that's just you know that's that's just wishful thinking. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to catch up. Uh, especially this summer, because uh, it's going to be a busy one for me. But yeah, uh, so let me know your thoughts about anything. Uh, you know, all the things that I covered, I talked about a lot of stuff. Just leave them in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you like these types of discussions. I rarely do them because I rarely have time. So, I mean, I hope you enjoy them when I do have time to post them up. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.